Hello everyone, how are you doing? Okay, in this part, we will be talking about the third part of our topic in which we're talking about regression models. And we previously introduced simple linear regression and then multiple linear regression. Today we will talk about still multiple re linear regression, but in the case of introducing qualitative variable in the model. Now, if some of the variables that have an effect or that have a relation with the dependent variable are qualitative variables, sometimes it's one or more variable, okay, we still can deal with this situation and use uh, regression analysis or we use multiple regression model to represent the relation between the dependent variable and the independent one. So in this case, and usually in regression analysis, we know that all variables should be quantitative, the independent variable and the dependent variable. Okay. And we saw in multiple regressions that I can have more than one independent variable, and they will be related or they have an effect on the dependent one. In this case, we're going to see that, practically speaking, or in practice, we saw sometimes that the dependent variable may depend on one or more independent variables that are qualitative. In this case, we still have a trick or a help. We have a way to deal with this situation in order to represent the relation between the dependent variable on one side and all the independent variable on the other side using multiple regression. In this case, we will use what we call binary or dummy or indicator variables. So binary variables or dummy variables are used to represent a qualitative variable in a multiple regression model. The rule is, if you use a dummy variable, okay, the, val the dummy variable will take one of two variables, either one uh, or, or zero. That's why it is called binary variable. So a binary variable or a dummy variable is a variable that will be introduced to the model. Okay, it will take either the value one or the value zero. And the number of dummy variables that you introduce in any multiple regression model will be equal to the number of the categories of the categorical variable that is introduced in the model, how that is present in the data, minus one. Now let's look at our example. In our example, we said we have the real estate company. Okay, so we have the data representing the selling price, which is in dollar. This is the Y. And we said, on the other hand, we have the size of the house, which is this, uh, measured in square foot, and the age in years. And we, last time, we talked about the relation, the equation of the multiple regression model that show me the relation between the selling price and both size and age of the house. We have another column, which is the last column here. This column talks about the condition of the house. So the house could be in a good condition or in an excellent condition or in a mint condition. These are the three, the three conditions of the house. Now, of course, if you think about what can have an effect on the selling price, of course, the age of the house will have an effect. And we saw this in the multiple regression model we introduced last time. Also, the size of the house. And of course, the condition of the house. So the price of a good house or a house that is in a good condition will be diff could be different than the one with an, in an excellent condition or the one in a mint condition. So now we need to represent the qualitative variable condition and insert it in the equation. And yani now I need to have or to add other variables in the multiple regression equation to represent this variable condition, which is a qualitative or a categorical one. The rule is to define a number of dummy or binary variable 
that is equal to the number of categories of the qualitative variable present that is presented in our data set minus one. Since the qualitative variable here condition has three categories, then we will be defining two dummy variables. I have three, three minus one will be two. So this means now that in my equation, I will have the first variable, which is x1 to represent the size, the second one, age, represented by x2. Now, since condition has three categories, okay, we will only be defining two new variables, which will be denoted by x3 and x4, and both will be dummy or binary variables. Now let's see how we can do this. We will start by defining x3. And as we said, every binary variable defined will have only two values. What are these two values? So now if you look at the first variable here, which is x3, Here it is, x3 is equal to 1 if the house is in an excellent condition. And it is equal to 0 otherwise. x4 is equal to 1 if the house is in mint condition and equal to 0 otherwise. So, this means now that the dummy variable that we're going to introduce to the model will be a variable that will take the value 1 if a certain category happens and it will take the value zero otherwise. In our case, the categorical variable is the condition. Since condition has three categories, okay, what we're going to do is to define two dummy variables, which are x3 and x4, okay, respectively to two of the categories of this variable. And the third one will not be represented by a dummy variable. That's why we said the number of dummy variable is equal to the number of categories minus one. In this case, x3 will be equal to one if the condition is excellent and zero otherwise. x4 is equal to one if the condition of the house is mint and zero otherwise. Now, we won't have any variable to represent the good condition. And the reason for this is very simple. If a house is not in an excellent condition, which means that x3 equals 0, and is not in the same time in a mint condition, which means that x4 equals 0. So if I have a case in which x3 and x4 both are equal to 0, this means automatically that it will be in a good condition. That's why we, we say that this category, for which we don't have any variable definition, is called an indicator. Why is it called an indicator? Because this category of the condition will be the category okay, to which you are going to be referring the values of the coefficients of x3 and x4. Now, in a moment, this will be clarified a bit, but let's start with what is the rule of adding dummy variables to a multiple regression model. Whenever I have a categorical or a qualitative variable, okay, and I want to represent it in a multiple regression model, I will look at the categories of this variable, okay, and define a number of dummy or binary variables okay that is equal to the number of category the number of categories minus one in our example we have three categories okay so we'll keep one of them which is the good condition and then we'll define x3 to be equal to one if the house is an excellent condition and zero otherwise x4 is equal to one if the house is in mint condition and zero otherwise. 
and the category good will be what we call the indicator. Now let's move to the output of the model. As usual, when you look at the output of the model, in the output, if you remember, we said that we have mainly three parts. Okay, so here is the first part in which I can look at uh, the coefficient of correlation and all of this stuff. The second part is the ANOVA table, and the third part is a part in, from which I can get uh, the, the equation, okay? And I can do the individual test of the coefficients of the independent variable. Now, sometimes they don't come in this order. Sometimes this table comes in the beginning and the ANOVA comes at the end. And it depends on the software used, okay? This, um, this example has been solved using Excel. So this is the order, okay, in which uh, the output shows in Excel. Now, the important uh, the first step, as usual, is to compose the equation. So let's compose the equation. How can I compose the equation? So I, it will be y hat equal to the y-intercept. So let's go back to the table. Here is the y-intercept. OK. And then plus v1 x1. And then B2, which is the coefficient of the age, that is a negative coefficient. And then X3, which is the excellent condition, has this value as coefficient. And finally, X4, which is the mint condition, which has this value as coefficient. Okay, so now this is our equation. Last time we talked about how to interpret the coefficients of x1 and x2. Now let's move to the new part, which is what does this equation tell us or what does it indicate us concerning the new variable that we have introduced. Now, if you look at Let's keep the here. If you look now at the coefficient of x3, what does this coefficient indicate us? Okay. This is the coefficient of x3. I know that if x3 is equal to 1, then this means that this house is in an excellent condition. If it's equal to 0, it is not in an excellent condition. It is otherwise either mint or good. The idea is when we define a dummy variable like x3, okay, the coefficient will give me an indication. Which indication this coefficient will give me or this equation will give me? This equation indicates me that a house in an excellent condition what do we mean in an excellent condition? It means when x3 is equal to 1. And of course, when x3 equals to 1, x4 must be equal to 0. Why? Because a house can never be in an excellent and in a mint condition in the same time. Okay? So, the house being in an excellent condition means when x3 equals to 1 and x4 equal to 0. The selling price of this house will be more than the price of the good condition house with an amount of 33,166 2.65. Let me repeat this statement another time. In the beginning, if you remember, we said when we define a dummy variable, okay, or when we have a categorical variable to start with in the beginning colis, we, we define a number of dummy variables that is, this number will be equal to the number of categories minus one. And we said the categories that will not be 
included in the definition of the variables will be what we call an indicator. Why is it an indicator? Because the coefficient of the dummy variable in an equation will always give me, give me the amount okay, for which this category is either higher if the coefficient is positive or smaller if the coefficient is negative relatively to the indicator. Now, let's go to the uh, application case that we have or the case that we are studying. Here, <clears throat> what does this coefficient represent me? So according to this equation, we can say that a house that is in an excellent condition okay, will sell for about 33,162.65 more than a house that is in good condition. So it's like it will be this quantity relatively to the category that is the indicator. Now, if I want to go for what does this value indicate me? According to this equation, a house in a mint condition will sell for about $47,369.25 more than a house that is in a good condition. Why more than? Because the coefficient is positive. If the coefficient is negative, it will be less than. This was our first step. Usually in the second step, we will go there and look at the ANOVA table. What do we do in the ANOVA table? In multiple regression, we said we have the uh, null hypothesis, which is the, mo uh, the model is not significant. Again, it's the alternative hypothesis, which is the model is significant. Okay, so we need to correct this. Here, the model is significant. Let me change this. Okay, so H0 is always the model is not significant, and H1 the model is significant. It looks like while I was writing, I made like copy and paste, and I did it erase not. According to the table we have, or the output we have, when I look at the p-value here, or significant f in the table, here it is. Okay, this value is smaller than alpha, and as we said, alpha is usually taken in any software as equal to 0.05. So this means that I will reject H node and accept H1. So we can say with the level of significance 5% that this model is significant. So we can accept that the model is significant. Now, in multiple regression, as we previously said, ANOVA is used to do an, an assessment for the whole model. Okay, now we can do individual assessment or individual t-tests for the coefficients. So now I can do a test for beta 1 here, which is the coefficient of uh, the size. When you do this test, okay, okay, here is the p-value is zero, so this means that beta one is significant. For beta two, it is also significant, and for beta three and beta four. 
Okay, so the individual coefficients are significant. So if we need to do individual tests for the individual coefficients, we can look at the last table. If at the third table here, I can get from this table the equation, and I can do individual tests for the intercepts if I want, and the different coefficients, beta 1, beta 2, and so on. ANOVA table will help me to test the significance of the whole model or of the whole equation. Now let's move to another part, which is the top part here, in which we have, okay, we can look at what we know is R squared, okay? Now we're going to do a small comparison, actually, between this R squared and the R squared we had previously. Previously, when we were uh, getting the relation between the selling price and on the other side, the size and the age, R squared was equal to 0.67. Here, R squared is equal to 0.89, which means that it has increased, still indicating that the model will be explaining about 89%, which is good, okay? Now, let's talk a bit about this issue. Actually, the reason why R squared has increased in this case is that we added new independent variable to the equation. The first equation we discussed last time or in the last lecture, we had only two independent variables, which are the size and the age. In this case, we added the condition represented by x3 and x4. The house is in excellent condition or in mint condition. So, whenever you add new independent variable to any multiple regression model equation, R squared will always increase. That's why whenever you add new variable to the the regression model and you need to check if the additional variable has a good effect or has improved the relation okay made the relation better you won't be looking at r squared but actually you will be looking at what we call the adjusted r squared it is here So let's go back. I simply put the I have put the value here that we received last time for the first model in which we had only two independent variables, the size and the age. R squared was equal to 0.67, and there was below R squared there was what we call the adjusted R squared, which is 0.61. Now. In our model, after inserting the new variables x3 and x4, in other words, after adding the house condition to the model, R squared be became 0.89. And this situation is usually the normal situation. Whenever we increase the number of independent variables in any regression model, R squared will always increase. Okay, so in order to check the validity, okay, or the effect of adding new independent variable to the model, in this case, you won't be looking at R squared, but you will be looking at adjusted R squared. Adjusted R squared in the first case, yani for the model in which we were we had only two independent variable was 0.61. Now, in our case, adjusted R square is equal to 0.85. Since it has increased, this means that the addition or the insert of the variable condition to the model has improved or had a good effect on the model. Yeah, but if you want to figure out the effect of adding a new variable to a regression model, okay, 
you are going to look at the adjusted R squares in the first model, then in the new model in which you added the new variable. If the adjusted R square increase, then this means that the addition of this variable has a good effect on the relation. It made the relation better. If it decreased, this means that the addition of this variable didn't have a good effect on the relation. So, if you want to summarize, what is the role of the adjusted R square? The adjusted R square actually takes into account the number of independent variables in the model. Okay, so generally speaking, if it increases when a new variable is added to the model, okay, this means that this variable has a good effect, which means that we need to keep it in the relation. Okay, this is a good variable, it has a good effect, it has increased the uh, efficiency of this model, then we should keep it in the model. Now, if the adjusted R square decreases, this means that the addition of this new variable is not that good. It didn't uh, leave a good effect on the model. Okay, then it should this variable should not remain in the model. There, there may be you have to think about another variable or another factor to affect the uh, dependent variable. If, so far, what we talked about is if I, how can I uh, represent a categorical variable in a multiple regression model and then how can I do an assessment for adding new independent variable to a regression model okay the last part that we're going to talk about in the model building so far Sometimes, okay, it happens that two of the independent variables are related somehow, or there is some kind of correlation between them. In this case, a phenomenon called multicollinearity happens. So multicollinearity exists if two independent or more than two independent variables are correlated. If Two independent variables are correlated. We say this is collinearity. So, if two independent variables are related by a linear relationship, yeah, and there is a correlation between two independent variables, we are facing a situation called collinearity. Okay, these they, they are collinear. Okay, now if more than two independent variable are correlated we call this multicollinearity now if collinearity or multicollinearity exists actually this will have an effect on the equation and of course on the hypothesis or the testing for the coefficients uh, for you, this won't be included. We won't, we won't be talking about collinearity and multicollinearity, but you only need to know, okay, uh, this term, okay? Simply that there is a term called collinearity if two independent variable, okay? So there are what we call collinear, okay? If there is a correlation between more than two independent variable, we call this situation multicollinearity. Okay, and multicollinearity, if it exists, it will have, of course, an effect on the, the model and testing or doing hypothesis testing for the coefficient will be a bit different. Uh, the way by which we do the test will not be valid, actually. So we have other ways to deal with this situation, which is beyond what, we're, what we are discussing in the course, so simply have in mind that this is like a theoretic part in which simply you need to know what is meant by having collinearity or multicollinearity in a multiple regression model or in studying the relation between one dependent and several independent uh, variables. Okay, this ends our third part. 
we are left with only one fourth part or one fourth video that I will record and post it to you. I made these small videos, okay, to cover the whole um, lecture in order simply to give you the chance or to facilitate the issue of downloading them. So, yeah, good luck and study well.